Gilpin in the red. Oh, you ready? Yes, sir. Gilpin comes out with what we call the gable wrap. I don't know if something happened to his head or if something happened to his ear. It's got a little protection on it. Gilpin with the headband might be the easiest way. He is taking on Otterfer. Otterfer coming, of course, from 10th Planet. Feeling each other out. It's always interesting in a grappling match because you do have this feeling out process and you, you have both guys that, that don't want to go down. However, the irony of all of that and all of that hard work and execution is both guys are great on the ground and at some point are going to be there. It's just a, it's not a question of can I try out your guard or can you try out mine? I'll assure you guys right now, we're gonna see them both in the guard. It's interesting to me that neither wants to concede who's going to go there first, even though it's all gonna equal the same thing. <laughs> it's gonna equal the exact same thing by the end of the night. It's a pride issue. I will decide who goes there first. And both athletes in every contest you're gonna see are going to share that same opinion. Ottifer is trying to get involved. Gilplin pushing him across the cage. Trying to figure out what scratch, what cauliflower ear, what is ailing Charlie Gilpin as he comes into this contest. If that headband moves, unless the referee is showing mercy and is in a good mood, he does not need to stop it. If that headband moves, it begins to distract the vision of Gilpin. But Gilpin is the one who applied it in the first place. He will, he will not be protected. <laughs> that, that headband can serve as a blindfold. That is what I'm attempting to tell you guys. Based on the mood and interpretation of the referee, Gilpin and Ottifer just, just content. And both of these guys very dangerous from the ground, just not wanting to be the first to go there against their will. And you'll see some other guys that say, you know what, to heck with that. Gordon Ryan, ah, uh, to heck with that. Craig Jones, ah, uh, to heck with that. They'll come right out and sit down, start looking for sweeps, start looking for actions, but they're just not gonna waste time here. Just not part of their, their game, right? It's, it's always a question of is the squeeze worth the juice? All of the energy that you're using in a push and pull wrestling, this is a wrestling situation. Is it worth it? Is it worth it just to delay a position that we already knew when we showed up today we're going to be in, which is that of grounded? Okay, Otifer coming to the collar. Gilpin's got the same hole. They're dead even here. Gilpin gives it a little tug. Ottifer circles off. Did you guys watch Font versus Garbrandt last night, by the way? What a fight. And I, I got to tell you, Garbrandt's never been whipped before. That has never happened. He's lost fights. He's been caught in his chin and he's gone down like any human being, but he's never been whipped. He got whipped last night. And it wasn't because Garbrandt wasn't ready or didn't look good. Garbrandt looked fantastic. You could tell he was in shape. All the intangibles were there. The grit, the mental toughness, the conditioning, they were all there. Font was a better fighter. I don't believe I ever said that about anyone to fight Garbrandt. No knock on Cody. Full congratulations to Font. Font went into that fight ranked number three. He will come out of that fight still ranked number three, but there's just nobody in front of him at this point. Right, I mean, there's two matches. You got Sandhagen and Dillashaw. You got the rematch with Aljo and, and Jan. And then you got Font sitting right there in pole position, waiting. Waiting for whoever comes out of one of those matches. I'm still enjoying the strategy that I'm seeing unfold in front of us. Guys, as soon as regulation time concludes, which is 40 seconds and ticking, they will be on the ground. The referee is going to flip a coin and place them on the ground. <laughs> Yet they've spent five minutes avoiding the position. They'll already guarantee you, they'll already guarantee you they would be in. And I guaranteed you they would both be on bottom, didn't I? By the end of the night, my guarantee will be true because they both will be, but they've now spent five minutes of energy and effort to avoid the spot that they are just about to find themselves in 
10 seconds. And by the way, I'm not picking on these two. Everybody comes in with this same mindset. We all know we're going to go right where Ottafer is right now. We all know we're going to get there. We're just not going to concede it early to our opponent. Yeah, how fun would that have been? That little 10 seconds we saw right there. Gilpin jumps to the back and the horn blows. How nice would that be to see that for the last three minutes? All right. All right, the coin toss. Gilpin wins. Gilpin has deferred. He is going to give Ottafer the first pick. Uncommon that somebody wins the toss and then gives it back to the other guy. I mean, it almost seems like you could do that before the say, hey, ref, hold on. Before you flip the coin, let me, he can have it. Oh, all right. Save myself a toss here. All right, Ottifer is already getting out to the side. Gilpin's going to be out of this in no time, and he is. Ottifer lost that right in the first second, the, fir the first millisecond. He lost that position as soon as Gilpin was able to sneak those hips out to the side a little bit. Now, time for fair play. Ottifer is trying to do the same thing. You notice how Gilpin followed him. What looked like them rolling across the ring, that was Gilpin following keeping his hips on top as long as his hips control you can get distracted all you want with this strangle that's going on you can get distracted with where the legs are if you maintain control of the hips you will maintain this position if you lose control of the hips no matter what you're doing around the neck or what you're doing down uh, the waist the referee will break the action It's very important that athletes look at it from that standpoint. Don't look at what the rules say. Look at, look at what the body physiology says. The body physiology says, I get can ownership of my hips, I own the position. Gilpin's thinking armbar here, guys. What looks to be a choke, he, he's thinking about swinging his right leg over and trying to go into an armbar here. Gilpin's playing two games, though. One game is the get a submission and get up and go home with the gold medal. The other game is beating the clock. If Gilpin is to go for the arm, he's thinking arm bar. If Ottafier takes the weight off the left side, I I'll assure you Gilpin's going to throw that leg over. He thought about doing right there. But it's a weight issue. It's a transfer of weight issue. Gilpin's allowing Ottafier to go first. For the reason that Gilpin has to, there's the arm bar. He's out. Gilpin wanted that. He wanted that for the last minute and 40 seconds. It's a beautiful armbar. Guys that pull an armbar from that position. Brent Primus. I worked out with Brent every day. I knew it was coming, but it's still hard to stop. It's very hard technique to stop. All right, Ottifer's going to come on top this time. Armbar, Gilpin on bottom. Now, see how Gilpin just brought both legs over? Gilpin's going to be safe here. But you have to bring both legs over. I referenced Cox in the first match that Cox bought one leg over and froze the position. You gotta bring both legs. You gotta bring both those legs with you. It will change the angle of your elbow joint in question. All right, Gilpin takes the back. Again, what looks like rolling here is Gilpin following. And when he follows with those hips, he gets to maintain the position. Ottifer, when he starts that motion, if he notices that his opponent, in this case Gilpin, is following him, he needs to change course. Start out going to the left, quick motion back to the right. Free those hips up. This is a game of, of hip control right now. All right, Gilpin's going back to thinking armbar. Notice Gilpin's right arm. That right arm is not engaged. It's not engaged because he needs it loose and fast to come to the opposite side of Ottifer's head. Now he's not going to do that, Gilpin. He's not going to swing for this arm bar until he gets his hips free. And right now, Ottifer has transferred the weight directly down. Too much weight on Charlie to swing that leg out. Charlie does a very good job of keeping his opponents guessing. Right, I mean, just look at this position. Charlie's got his legs involved. Well, you got to think about that. Then Charlie's up top pretending he's going to choke you and threatening an arm bar. You got to think about that. All the while, Charlie's playing a different game, which is just keep my hips on your hips so the referee allows me to stay in this position. Okay, Charlie's starting to come in. Ottifer's gonna push this off. There's no choke there. Not yet. And he's free. 
This is third. The bottom of the second. I tell you guys what, I don't have a clock in my hand, but the one in my head says that Ottifer is going to need to find a submission. He's running out of time. It's very big discrepancy in who's held who longer. Ottifer's got to be thinking about going for the grand slam. Ottifer trying to come on top. Gilpin's out. All right, beginning of our final stanza here. Gilpin on the back. Oh. Ottifer pushing that, see how Ottifer's pushing that elbow up? As simple as that defense looks, that's, that's very good. That's high level technique. It really is to simply know when to scoot your body down and to push that, hey, I don't like where this elbow is in relation to my neck. I can't move my neck, I can't move the here. Let me just pry this elbow up. Charlie trying to bring his hand over. Otifer's gonna get out here. One movement, he's gonna get out. Oh, he fell back down. Fell back down right underneath Charlie, right into his lap. Charlie thinking armbar again, but the weight is on the wrong side. He's not going to be able to sp swing that leg over. Not until Ottifer comes to the other side. Gilbert's done a great job with control here, but he, he's looking to triangle the body. His legs just simply aren't long enough. Good job by Ottifer. There was that explosive movement. And that's what it takes to get off the bottom. It's those explosive movements. You get your, your opponent going one way and flowing and following you and you explode the other way. Very good match by Ottifer. Look, it's just a time. It's a time discrepancy. Ottifer just showed he's got the technique. He got out of every position he needed to get out of. He just didn't do it quick enough. Isn't that right, Mr. Keeney? Ladies and gentlemen, your winner due to escaping in the least amount of total time in the overtime rounds, Charlie, the Golden Boy, Gilpin! Charlie.